Welcome, cognitive explorers. Imagine a world where climate disasters force us to make unthinkable choices. Today, we're diving into the ethical minefield of our rapidly changing planet. From authoritarian AI to transhumanistic solutions, we're exploring radical ideas that challenge our very notion of humanity. Buckle up, knowledge seekers. This is ASD, and we're about to navigate the choppy waters of climate change ethics. You know, headlines about climate change, they're one thing. Right. But this deep dive with your research and questions yeah. really brings it home, you know, like how urgent things are getting. It really does. And you're right. Yeah. It seems like every time we turn around, mm -hmm. we're facing another worst case scenario. Right. That's become our reality. It's become the new normal almost. Yeah. And that frustration you talk about. Mm about the lack of action. Mm -hmm. I get it. It's fascinating, isn't it? Yeah. This disconnect between, you know, the urgency of the science right. and just the pace of societal change. Yeah. It makes you wonder, like, it's a pattern. Mm -hmm. We've seen this throughout history when you think about it, right. like major shifts. Yeah. The fall of empires, mm -hmm. economic revolutions, oh, right. even just the emergence of new technologies. Right. These things often only happen. Yeah after a significant tipping point, mm -hmm. a real crisis that forces everyone to adapt. It's like, we need that kick in the pants to get going. Right, and so the question is, with climate change, are we gonna wait Yeah. until it's too late, you know? Is that tipping point gonna come too late? And it's almost ironic, you know, yeah. the way you pointed out how people are moving to the very places mm, yes. most vulnerable to climate change. I like the southeast it's wild right with the hurricanes getting stronger all the time yeah it's like come on folks are we reading the same weather reports it's tempting to think logic should prevail right of course yeah but human behavior yeah. it's not always logical right it's complex right you can give someone all the facts and figures in the world yeah. about rising sea levels and and you know storms mm -hmm. intensifying yeah but there's an emotional element, too, yeah. to where we choose to live, you know, mm -hmm. a connection to place right. that's really hard to shake, yeah. even when it seems like, you know, it's risky to be there, yeah. you yeah, know. Yeah. People are complicated. It's true. And that kind of leads us to, well, it's a pretty radical idea that you brought up in your research. Yeah. Could artificial intelligence, maybe even like super intelligent AI, mm -hmm. be the answer to our, you know, our climate inaction problem. It's a big question. You even had a term for it, uh, wow. ASI Authoritarian Month. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a bold idea to say the least. It definitely makes you think, right? Yeah. And I and I understand where it's coming from. That yeah. feeling that we need to act fast. Right. We need to act decisively. Yeah. And so ASI Authoritarian Month basically means okay. We'd be letting a super intelligent AI call the shots. Right. For one month. Okay. To kind of implement climate solutions sure. with a speed and efficiency yeah. that we as humans, you know, right, just yeah. can't match. Right. So we're talking about an AI so advanced it could analyze global systems, mm -hmm. design solutions, maybe even like overhaul entire industries yeah. to make them, you know, sustainable. Right. 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 All in a month. It's a tall order. It sounds like a, a sci-fi movie, honestly. Sounds like a movie, yeah. But but then there's that other side of the coin, right? Right. You got to talk about the authoritarian part. There it is, yeah. What about the ethics? Like, are we really going to just hand over control like that? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? I mean, right. even if we just assume for a second, yeah. and it's a big if, right? Yeah. That an ASI right. would even act in humanity's best interests. Right. Wrong. You know, who defines that? Exactly. Yeah. Like, what does that even mean? How do we ensure, yeah. you know, things that we really care about? Yeah. Individual liberty, democratic principles right. aren't just, you know, trampled on yeah. in the process. It seems risky. And and the biggest unknown of all, right? Right. What are the unintended consequences right. of giving? Like, you know, that much power, unlimited power yeah. to something we might not even comprehend. And that's what I found so interesting about your point. OK. Connecting this back to what AI can already do. Yeah. Like you mentioned research showing that AI can now get this. OK. Decode what someone is seeing. It's like they use fMRI scans. Yeah.
Welcome back to the deep dive. Feed that data into these like sophisticated neural networks mm -hmm. trained on these massive data sets of, you know, yeah. brain activity and corresponding images. It's incredible. It really is. Yeah. It's like something out of science fiction. But it's real. It's becoming real. Yeah. It's happening now. Right. So if AI can already do that, mm. tap into our brains like that. Yeah. How can we control something potentially thousands of times more intelligent? It's a crucial point. And, you know, it circles back to the yeah. heart of, like, your concerns about yeah. the limitations of our current approaches. Like education. Right. We talk about these things. Early communication game. reform, improving communication. Right. But, like, the gap between yeah. AI's capabilities yeah. and our understanding huge. is widening at an alarming pace. It's only getting bigger. How do we bridge that? How do we even, you know, right. ensure that... That we're the ones in control, you know? Right. We're steering the future, not just like passengers along for the ride. Right, yeah. These are the questions we can't ignore. That's a good point. So we talked about AI, right? Mm -hmm. The potential, the risks. Mm -hmm. But your research, it took this whole other turn. Yeah. Something that really, honestly, kind of baffled me. Okay. But, but also, I got to say, intrigued me. Interesting. You started exploring, get this, uh -huh. transhumanism. Mm -hmm. As a potential solution. Right. I mean, it sounds like, are we even, like, I don't... It's out there. It's a whole other dimension. Under the boundaries, that's for sure. Right. But if we were really follow, like, the thread of your research, you know, mm -hmm. that that may be the biggest hurdle to all this, to tackling climate change. That yeah. might be us. Yeah. Our own, like, limitations as humans. Right. Transhumanism, it, it... It's a thought. It starts to seem a little more possible right you know maybe not less radical but right. definitely like a possible path forward okay so for those of us who haven't you know spent our time in the the transhumanism corner of the internet right right let's unpack that a little bit yeah. because i think when people hear like transhumanism mm -hmm. they probably picture you know like dystopian futures right, right. cyborgs and and like you know Immortality serum. Yeah, immortality serum. Exactly, oh, that, that kind of thing. Yeah, it's easy to get caught up in the, the sensationalized versions of it. Right. But at its heart, transhumanism, it's really about yeah. Yeah. using technology to enhance human capabilities. Okay. Right. And in this in this case, we're not talking about, right. you know, superhuman strength or, or telekinesis or anything. Right. We're talking about, like, enhancing our capacity for for thinking long term, okay. for making good decisions right. based on complex information, uh, for understanding how all these global systems are connected. So like overcoming our limitations. Yes, exactly. The I, cognitive biases. Yes, those so, cognitive biases right. that lead to these like... Our short-sighted choices. Exactly. Yeah, the short-sighted choices. So if we could enhance those parts of ourselves, right. maybe even bridge that that gap you were talking about before yeah, yeah, yeah. between, you know, our brains and the, and these rapidly evolving AI brains, mm -hmm. would that make us better equipped to actually handle something as complex as climate change? That's the question, right? That's a big one. It's a huge question. And, and of course, right. it, it opens up like a whole Pandora's box right, of right, considerations, right. you know. Right. But I think the fact that we're even having this conversation, that yeah. your research led us to this point. It, it just speaks to the urgency of this whole climate crisis. Wait. We need to be open yeah. to considering all these possibilities, right. even the ones that... The ones that blow our minds a little bit. Exactly. You know, the ones that really challenge our understanding yeah. of what it means to even be human. And, you know, it's funny because when I saw that you had been looking into, like, Computers made of mushrooms. Oh, right. Yeah. Biocomputing, is that what they call it? Yeah, biocomputing, that's right. I got to say, I laughed. Right. Because if you had told me a year ago yeah. that that's where this deep dive into climate change was going to take us, right. I don't think I would have believed you. <laughs> but but here we are talking about, you know, here we are. merging with machines. It just goes to show you, right? Like yeah, yeah. we are living in, in an era of Sex just free. like wild technological advancement it's happening so fast and and with that yeah. comes this responsibility i think to yeah. really ask the tough questions yeah right to consider all the paths all yeah. the options right as wild as some of them may seem so where do we go from here that's the question i mean i think this deep dive has really like brought it home yeah that 
There are no easy answers here. No easy answers. But but you've brought up some ideas yeah. that really make you think, and and maybe that's the point. And, and maybe that's the most important takeaway for for people listening. You yeah. know, from your research, from your questions. Yeah. It just highlights how much we need to be like bolder in our thinking be more creative more creative more willing to challenge our own assumptions about what's possible about what's possible exactly Maybe because the future is unwritten the future is unwritten yeah and it's up to us it's up to us to decide what role we want technology and and even our own evolution to play what role we want to play in shaping it all exactly yeah. and, and maybe just maybe like it's not about finding the perfect solution. It's about asking the right questions. Asking the right questions. Like you've done here. There you go. If AI can already basically read our minds mm -hmm. in these like crazy sophisticated ways. Yes, pretty much. What does that even mean for us? For humans. Right. You know. Big questions. For our agency, our decision making. Uh, yeah. Whether we're talking AI governance or or transhumanism or or something we haven't even thought of yet. Exactly. Who knows what the future holds? That's something to ponder. Something to think about. Until next time, everyone, keep asking those big questions. As we conclude this first part of our ethical odyssey, we're left standing at the crossroads of human evolution and technological integration. The path forward is unclear, but the stakes couldn't be higher. Join us next time as we delve deeper into the mind-bending possibilities that await us. Stay curious, stay questioning, and remember, the future is ours to shape.